Hey guys, it's Leo, and it's time to talk about episode 47 of Hakto Prikwa. This episode brought us closure to Listel and Bishin while giving us some surprises in the middle, and I was so happy you guys could imagine, right? Uh, so this episode started right where it ended in the last, uh, in episode 46. Um, the big fight was starting, lots of Oshimaida, Listel and Bishin arriving and trying to stop the cures, so the cures had to fight them. Um, I think that this episode was not as grand as episode 46. It didn't bring much plot as episode 46 did. Uh, while it had to close some loose ends, it could have done more, in my opinion. But it also had one of the best moments of the franchise, of the franchise, no, of this season to me. Uh, and well, when the fight started, the cures they were not really being able to hold off the the big wave of Oshimaida, and it was funny because when the Oshimaida started attacking, Cure Ande uh, was right there at the front trying to stop them with her hard feather, and I was like, "Girl, this attack did, didn't work uh, since episode four. You know, you you cannot make this attack work, please. You knew it wouldn't work." And, you know, everything seemed helpless and hopeless. The girls were feeling very weak. And when things were in the brick of despair, the real heroes arrived. And, you know, they were the best part of this episode to me. Seeing Papuru and her boys coming and fighting and helping the cures, special Hakuto moments. You know, Papuru, I, I'm gonna be really honest here. Papuru is my favorite Hakuto character. She's not only my favorite Hakuto villain, she is my favorite Hakuto character. I love her, I love her mannerisms, I love the way she speaks, I love her voice actor, I love everything about her. And it was so nice when they arrived, you know, when she was using her fan. Look, we, we saw Papuru attacking in some instances in this season, but uh, after this episode, we could really say she's really strong. She can really hold her own. You know, she can really use her powers with her fan. And it was so nice uh, watching Papuru use her powers and then uh, Charlie to use his powers and Daigon trying to fight a little bit as well. It was really great. And one of the things I really liked about their participation is the message they brought. Hakuto is a children's show, so we usually have children being the focus and children being the ones that have dreams, that, worked, that work towards their dreams. They're the ones. But uh, Precure, it has a very big fan base outside of the, the children that follow the show, which is the biggest fan base, but it has a big fan base outside that as well. So we adults, we also love Precure. And I think that what they said was really special because we as adults we tend to lose power in our dreams and in ourselves when we're growing up life is hard life is really hard and it's going to kick you it's going to to make you fall and sometimes life will, will even make you stay in the ground and it, you won't be you won't find anything to hold on to so that you can rise again, so that you can stand up again and start fighting for your dreams again. And that's what happened with all of those characters. They all fell into despair and they lost hope. That's why they joined Kriasa Corp. But then they were able to find themselves again. And they brought this message to this episode. No matter how old you are, you still have time to fight for your dreams. You still have time to believe in, uh, in what you want for yourself. And you can start again. You can restart. You can start fighting. You can start going after the things you want. I love this message so much because sometimes we want to give up. Sometimes we want to, okay, I don't want it anymore. I want nothing anymore. I just want to, I just want my life to keep on going the way it is, or even I want to end it all. But no, I mean, there is another way. If you're alive, you can rise, you can stand up and you can fight. And I also loved that there were little moments like with Charlie and Hana, and I love that he calls Hana Chan Hana, and because Hana was the one who saved him. We also had a little moment with Daigon and Cure Anjay Saya because she healed him once. 
And, you know, that is, th that is very cool. I really like those little moments. And we also have Dr. Trom joining in. His interactions with Lulu are always amazing. We also had a great moment with um, Etoile. I think they have a little fun with Etoile while, draw while drawing her in the fights because she can fly with her stars and they can, you know, have so much fun in creating scenarios for her to fight. She is the only one that actually uh, had those different little moments. Uh, and even Kira Andre had her little moment with um, Feather Blast and it was kind of nice as well, you know? It was nice seeing them fight away from the protocol and um, because, you know, I am always complaining about the Hukto fights and I still think they could have done better than they did in this episode, but I feel like it was a good thing and I have to praise when they do good because that's what they did in this episode. The fight was nice. Um, but then, uh, when it came to Bishon and Listol, I think that the ball dropped a little bit. We still don't really know much about Listol and what really happened to him, what drove him to do what he did and to lose complete hope like he did. And I don't really know if I feel for him the way the show was intending for me to feel because I don't know, it feels like we don't really know much about Listel, we don't really know much about what really happened back then with um, the hamster land. You know, that episode, it, it didn't really bring much in terms of plot. So I don't know if I really feel for, for him and for Bishin as well, you know, and the way Listel was healed it was so anticlimactic and it was kind of easy. And again, when Harry uh, broke his chain and became the crazy monster he is, I thought that we were going to have like a big epic moment for him to go, to go back to who Harry was before, like the little hamster with the chain on. No, it was just like, okay, I healed Listel, and now I can go back to who I was. There was no real danger in him breaking the protection that was cast on him. I didn't really understand that part. I really didn't. And I think with Bishan, it helped kind of like the same thing. I mean, I don't think that there is much of a plot in Bishan's story. Uh, it's just part of Bishan's personality, the intensity that he feels things. But the way it was done, it I mean, I think that I was expecting a little more because when uh, we had so many great plot moments, like when Papru was purified, when Jello's work was purified, you know, the, the, the dialogues were great and the way the purification happened, it was also gorgeous. I, I didn't really feel like that with Bishan, you know, I didn't really feel like that with Bishan at all, but okay. Uh, I was missing Jellos. I was like, where is Jellos? And then she appeared. I was like, oh girl, you came right at the last moment. You came at the right moment. At the same time, I was like, because you know, the girls need, needed to go like to the sea, to go where uh, the big Oshimaida was and to go against George and save Hugton. Girl, come on. The five of you, you're cures. Etoal can use Star Slash, you can just jump into a star and go there. Or you can just jump there. You know, there is no real protocol in what a Precure can do. You know, you can even, you can even walk uh, across water. You can even do that if you want. And, you know, there was like this debate, oh, oh my god, how can we go there? And, you know, it was a way of introducing Jellos, I understand that. But they could have thought in another way. They could have thought about it in another way because, I mean, this is lazy writing for me, okay? Uh, I think that Jello's inclusion in this episode was necessary, it was needed. I liked the way she went on. I liked that Hannah held her while they were going there. But uh, the reason Jello's was there she didn't need to be there. That's what I want to say. She didn't need to be there. She just need, uh, you know, the, the curious could have gone there before without her. They didn't even need to think of how they were going to go. And when they got there, 
I think that the structure of that battle against George was interesting, but at the same time, it could have had a little more participation of them, you know, of them using their powers. Because I feel like, um, uh, like for example, Cure Ante, she's a protective cure. She was never used as a protective cure at all in the whole season. And you know, we're not gonna see Cure Ante battle anymore in this season. We're not. And she could have used her protective powers there somehow. It didn't, it didn't happen, you know? The curious, they didn't do anything. I think that the nice part was the philosophy behind it all. And the way that they, they kept on believing on themselves as cures and their powers of reforming, of reviving something. When Curiel was locked in that cage, she was feeling so desperate, seeing the cures get wrecked, she was feeling desperate and she was almost losing hope. But when she, when uh, Toge Power started rising, the other cures um, prompt, promptly uh, said, come on, we're cures, we're strong, we can do this, we're powerful enough. And they were able to break it away and they were able to destroy um, the spell uh, that George put them in. They were able to destroy the place where George was. They were able to do that. They were able to overcome that. Uh, and I loved the way uh, Anje and Etoal saved Hana. You know, they, they destroyed that cage. I feel like uh, the, the relationship they brought, it, 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 the three of them, it's really good. I, I feel a little sorry because it wasn't really focused on the, the second half of Hato. But uh, it's still a great relationship, and I feel like they really believe in each other. And as uh, Anje said, what I can do, you can't, but what you can do, I can't. So we together, we complement each other. And that's a beautiful philosophy. I like that. And, you know, I really liked that moment. Um, the, the visual part, it wasn't well done, but the idea behind it was really nice. And... Well, now we're basically left uh, with um, the last battle. We're basically left with the last battle because the cures went on the black hole and now it's Curiel versus George only. Hugton's there, Hugton's like the prize of the battle, so Curiel has to win. Uh, we're only two episodes away and I feel like is going to need to rush now. Hugton needs to show us George's story Hugto needs to show us Hannah's side of the story, Hannah's closure, which is probably going to be related to George and Hugton. And we also need to see Hugton. Apart from that, we need to see, we need to know a little bit more about Cure Tomorrow, and we need to see how things are going to go in the future. I mean, they're going to get separated and the future is going to be reformed. So Harry, Hugton, George, Lulu and Trom are going to go to the future and the other ones are going to stay. How are things going to go? And we all, we're we only two episodes away. I, I don't want things to be rushed. I really don't. But I wish that they could have put some of this into episode 47. Because then they wouldn't need to rush this much into the last two episodes only. So, uh, yeah, in my opinion, episode 47 had great points. It brought the villains back, and I'm so happy for it. I mean, we all deserve second chances. We all deserve to grow up. We all deserve to be. We all deserve chances so that we can become better. And they used those chances. You know, they really believed in themselves. And they were able to, you know, fight, and they were able to help the cures. That's so nice. Um, but you know, I feel like 47 had great moments and not so great moments. I, I, it felt a little, um, uh, some, some, part, some parts of this episode, uh, they didn't really feel that satisfying to me, you know. But now I think 48 is going to be very serious. And it's interesting because the preview doesn't show basically anything. So I think they're really, um... They're really trying to surprise us in episode 48. Oh, and we also need to see Cure Star. Oh my god. So there's so much to happen in Hugto. Oh my god. They need to fit so many things into only two episodes. So, oh my god. I'm, I'm curious to see how they're going to do this. 
Anyways, guys, that was my view on episode 47. Please leave a comment with yours and let's keep talking. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye-bye.